Hi, welcome to Tips from the Hips, the greatest woodworking tips and hips on the internet, in my view. I want to start by thanking Peter in Germany for reminding me of a tip I gave to remove slack in the depth adjustment on a plane. He actually came up with a slightly different variation on it, uh, but it reminded me of my method, so I'll show you them both. Now, whether you can cope with slop in the depth adjustment is just a personal thing. It's where you spin this wheel here and nothing happens and then after maybe four or five turns suddenly it, uh, it will move the iron. And same when you spin it back the other way. And that can become, I guess, quite irritating. Well, there are a few ways to get rid of it and a few different areas that need to be addressed. But one of the easiest ones to do, um, I'm going to show you now. So why is there slot there in the first place? Well, if we take this plane apart, we can see that the iron is moved up and down by this little lever that comes through through the iron, the slot in the iron, and also through the slot in the cap iron. Now that lever is connected through the frog by this pin and then through this yoke that goes round a little slot on the spin wheel. So plenty of different contact areas where there can be a little bit of a gap and that's causing problems. So if you can see here, if I move the lever, first of all you can see down at this end, those rounds on there within the groove, they're a little bit sloppy on there. So that's one problem. Second problem is we're using a thread with the spin wheel. Whenever you use a thread, there's always a little bit of slop on there. Uh, the next thing is, and probably the biggest thing to be honest, is where this lever comes through here and engages into the chip breaker or cap iron. And I think you better see quite easily that I can move this iron up and down quite a long way. And of course that means I need to move that lever quite a long way before it actually engages to move the iron in the opposite direction. So what can we do about that? Well, the one method I came up with was using a shim of metal which would clip into that gap there and just clip over the top of the, the um, chip breaker. Just holds it in place. So that removes a fair bit of the slot. What Peter came up with was using a shim of metal, folding it over in half and putting it over this lever. And for the same piece of metal that would double the amount of effect it had. But obviously the thickness of the piece of metal you use is going to be based on how much room there is there. And actually that amount of room changes depending on the position of that spin wheel. Uh, as you get down to a point where that lever is in the middle of its travel, then it's a little bit wider. So you'll have to experiment, basically. A little bit of sheet metal folded over there, try that method. If it falls off and you keep losing it every time you take your iron out to, uh, to sharpen it, uh, then you can try my method where it will clip onto the chip breaker and stay on there when you take things apart. Personally I don't tend to bother anymore and I just automatically spin it out every time I go to change the blade. So spinning one way, okay, just spin it a couple of times and it'll spin around until the blade moves. And I'm so used to doing that that it doesn't bother me at all. So join me next time for more tips from the hips. It might actually be viewers tips, but they're still the best tips and hips on the internet. Cheerio. For a chance to win the nightstand I've been building, check out my Just Giving page. And for more tips from the hips, subscribe now and check out the playlist.